So I've been getting some questions from you guys about some advanced stuff that you're looking into with Xmonad, and some of you guys are, are struggling to get this stuff up and working. Specifically, I've gotten some questions recently regarding how to create custom prompts in Xmonad and how to use server mode in Xmonad. So custom prompts, well, let me show you what the, the prompts are. So Xmonad has several pre-built prompts that you can use if you so choose. You have our standard run prompt, similar to D menu, an SSH prompt, a man page prompt, I go to my desktop and if I just go ahead and do the run prompt you see at the top of the page I have run colon and then a cursor and if I just start typing I just start typing Firefox for example you know it'll launch Firefox and of course that works similarly with the SSH prompt the man page prompt etc but some people are wanting to create their own custom prompts and the documentation on how to do that is is not that great and you know really not a lot of people probably create their own custom prompts. So uh, trying to find examples of other people's prompts is, is challenging. The other thing people are asking me about server mode in Xmonad, that is the ability to run Xmonad commands from the command line, basically. So you can run those Xmonad commands at the command line. That also allows you to run those Xmonad commands, of course, in your scripts. So let's tackle the custom prompt problem first. So let me go to my desktop here. I'm gonna open up my Xmonad config and let me zoom in here. And if I go down my config and this section right here, and I will push this config to my GitLab. If, if it's not already there, it, it should be there shortly after I post this video. But this section I called calc prompt, it requires a program called calculate with a Q dash GTK. This section here, now I did not write this myself, I ripped this off from somebody, but I thought it was a really great custom prompt, and you can use this as a template, basically, to create your own prompts. So what he's doing here is, let me open up a terminal, so I, I need to show you guys actually what calculate-gtk is. So you need to install this program, calculate-gtk. It probably is in everybody's repos. Once you have it installed, it's a command line calculator. So I could run calc, I don't know, 2 plus 4. And it says 2 plus 4 equals 6. You know, it just spits the output right there in the terminal. Pretty simple tool, right? Not much to it. And what he has done here is he's got calc prompt and he has created the type here. It takes the XP config. The XP config is basically my prompt config. That's the prompts background color, foreground color, border, things like that, all the settings, key bindings that it uses. And then it's taking a string and it's returning that string to X, basically, to the X display server. And then he's got the calc prompt function here. I'm not exactly sure what each and every word in this function is doing here, but he's basically saying you're going to input something into calc prompt, and then it's going to run this process with input calc plus whatever you inputted. So it's basically, if I input two plus four in the prompt, like I did in the terminal, it's gonna run calc plus two plus four, and then it's gonna return us back to another calc prompt with the answer. Let me show you this in action. So I set this here to this key binding, mod one C, C, that's alt control C. So if I do alt control C, I get this prompt at the top that says calc, and if I do 1 plus 3, it returns 1 plus 3 equals 4. The same output you would have got had you done this in the terminal. But the difference is you get the output and then you get another prompt. So I could immediately do another calculation. 2 plus 5 equals 7. Or 3 times 7 equals 21, etc., etc. It's just a very simple calculator. But I do think Calc Prompt does provide a really easy template because even without really knowing what's going on here, any command line program that basically takes an argument and spits out one line of text should work here. So I actually could replace Calc here. So let me just replace Calc. And let, let me do another very simple command line program, where is. And the only reason I choose where is, it's not a very useful program to put in a prompt, but I know it's a very basic command that spits out one line of text. So other than that, I'm going to write, let me restart Xmonad. And I'm going to run the calc prompt again. Of course, this time it's not really calc. It's going to run the where is command on whatever I input here. So I'm going to do a where is. Firefox. 
And if I hit enter, I get the output from the where is command right here. And then of course, another prompt so I could do where is Alacrity. And then I get the where is output for Alacrity. So pretty good template for a simple prompt for, for those of you looking to do more advanced stuff. Uh, again, there's not a ton of people out there doing these custom Xmonad prompts. I dug around a little bit. I had to do some digging just to find this one. I actually just found this in a random stack overflow post. Now let's get into server mode a little bit because this one is a bit challenging. I've had several of you guys looking at server mode and for whatever reason, you can't get it to work. You, you can't even get the script to compile. And I must admit, when I first looked at this, it, it was a little confusing. I had to read the documentation for this, the, the server mode page here, a few times before it finally clicked. Ah, I see what it's doing here. So basically, what you need to do is in your Xmonad config, obviously, you need to import this module, Xmonad hooks dot server mode. So if I go back to my config here and go to the top of the screen here, you see in my imports under hooks, I have import hooks server mode right here. Make sure you import that. And then the tricky thing here is you need an external program, something other than Xmonad to control what's going on. You basically need a client and they give you an example client here. So this file right here, this is just an example Xmonad server client. Copy this. When you have this copied, uh, they suggested saving it as Xmonad CTL. If I switch back over to the desktop and let me open up a terminal, I'm going to CD into my Xmonad directory and do an LS. And I already copied Xmonad CTL.hs. So let me show you this here. It's basically exactly what was here. Now, once you do that, put that in your Xmonad folder. So dot Xmonad is typically where your Xmonad config is. And once you have that in your Xmonad folder, then uh, what you need to do is compile xmonad ctl and this is a bit tricky because you would think a basic command would be ghc xmonad ctl dot hs that's typically the command to, to compile uh, a haskell document but it returns errors for whatever reason it spits out errors every time and i could not figure out why I, I tried for like an hour to get this thing to compile and finally just looking through some of the ghc documentation i found this flag here dash dynamic so ghc dash dynamic xmonad ctl dot hs and it compiles just fine right? no errors now that we have Xmonad CTL compiled, the tricky part is running Xmonad CTL. So let me run it. Uh, the correct way to run it would be dot slash Xmonad CTL. Basically, the same way you run a script. Nothing happens. Yeah, you know, it's just waiting. It's, so let me control C to cancel that because Xmonad CTL doesn't actually work unless you give it some arguments to work with what arguments do you need to give it and that's where you really got to dive into the documentation so the documentation gives us some examples you know you can run xmonad ctl command one command two those are just examples but that's not an actual command what are the actual commands and really until i dug deeper into the documentation what you need to do is in your main somewhere in the main of your xmonad config you have this handle event hook and then you need to add server mode event hook or server mode event hook prime or server mode event hook command or server mode event hook if there, there are several different of these hooks and you can add more than one. And that's exactly what I did. If I get back over into my config, let me move to a different workspace. So this is the main of my config. And you can see I added handle event hook equals and then I added three uh, things from the page here and what I added was server mode event hook command plus server mode event hook plus server mode event hook f and then I also in this particular event hook I've got the docs event hook that handles managing the docs such as xmo bar and you know things like that so let's get back to the browser for a second one of the things you you really have to read the documentation so the basics of this, if you look at server mode event hook, and it says xmonad ctl zero tells xmonad to output a command list. 
All right, sounds pretty simple. So let me get back into the terminal. Let me run xmonad ctl this time, zero. It doesn't return an error, and we get another prompt. So it did something, but I didn't get an output. If that was supposed to give me a list of commands, uh, it didn't do a very good job, but you got to read carefully. It says it writes it to standard error, which is dot x session dash errors. So if I go back into the terminal and let's open nvim dot x session slash errors. And if I do a capital G here in Vim to get to the bottom of the page. The very last thing we just did, it says couldn't find command zero. So when I did the xmonad ctl zero, you know, it couldn't find command zero, so it errored out. And when it errored out, it added all of this. You see, I have one equals view dev, dev is my first workspace. Two equals shift dev, and well, again, shifting to my first workspace. Three, four, five, six, you have all these commands. So basically number 35, swap up, 36, swap down. These are actually xmonad commands. You see number 39, quit dash wm, quit the window manager. So those are the numbers to use with xmonad ctl. I'm gonna quit out of that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cat that because I want a prompt here, but I do need to see these numbers. So if I do, xmonad ctl and I do one, I should view the first workspace. And you see that window no longer has focus. That window was on my second workspace. Focus is actually now on this far left monitor that you guys are not seeing. It just switched focus to that monitor. Now let me bring the focus back here. And if I wanted to do something else, let me open up another window first. So let me open up this window here. And stop that animation and find a command here to maybe change a layout. Oh, number 25, next layout. Right now I'm in the master and stack layout, but if I do xmonad25, we switch layouts to the monocle layout. If I do that command again, we switch to the floating layout. If I do that command again, we switch to the grid layout and to the tabbed layout, to a spiral layout, to a three columned layout, to a three row layout, back to the master and stack layout. If I wanted to change focus here, what I could do is xmonad ctl35, which swaps focus up. You see how it, the, the windows just changed positions. And if I do xmonad36 for swap focus down, uh, we basically put them back where they were before. Now you don't have to use the numbers. Other than the numbers, you could actually type out the full command. For me to switch to the view to my first workspace, I would have to type this very lengthy command because I do some things with xdo tool to have clickable workspaces in my xmo bar. So I would have to type these full commands, but because we have the numbers, it makes these a lot shorter. So I could do xmonad ctl space quit dash window manager and it would kill xmonad or I could just do xmonad ctl 39 and it does the exact same thing. And of course, these numbers I'm talking about were just for me because you may not have this many workspaces. I had nine workspaces. You may have less, you may have more. So the numbers may not correspond to the commands, you know, for me as they would for you. So in my config, you know, I've got this. I'm going to go ahead and push it to my GitLab so you guys can see about the custom calculator prompt and you guys can see what I did with server mode. And I even made a little comment here for the xmonad ctl commands. Other than the numbers, if you wanted to, you could do xmonad ctl shrink, expand, next layout, default layout, restart, wm, xterm, which just launches xterm, of course, kill, refresh, run, which is hard coded to launch D menu. So if you wanted to see that in action, let me do a xmonad ctl run. And it's not the xmonad run prompt. You would think it would be the, one of the built-in xmonad prompts, but it actually <laughs> launches D menu and actually launches D menu at the bottom of my screen, which is strange because as my D menu config actually <laughs> is supposed to launch D menu at the top of the screen. But for some reason they have it set to launch at the bottom. So that was just a very brief look at how to create your own custom prompts in xmonad and how to use server mode in xmonad. Now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank Michael, Mitchell, Gabe, Haplo, Nate, Arch5530, Chris, Chuck, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Libra Quest, Omri, Paul, Rob, Sean, Tobias, and Willie. These guys, they are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. These guys are the producers of this show. 
The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. This is all my supporters over on Patreon because this show is sponsored by you guys, the community. If you'd like to support my work, consider doing so. You'll find DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.